In this training video, we're going to look at the use of auto scheduling tasks. So here we've got three tasks which are joined together, linked together, under a summary task. Now the, the three training courses, Excel, Word and Visio training, and they've got different durations. Now all these dates at the present are starting on a start date of the 23rd. Now this is coming from the project information on the project tab. So that's where the start date is coming from. So if I wanted all three to be in control from one single start date, I can with auto scheduling. So saying I wanted this particular block of training courses all to start much later. Say I wanted them all to start on going from the, let's say the 13th of August. Now I can change the start date and they all move on now to the 13th of August. So when you use an auto scheduling, you're picking up on Microsoft Projects automated features like the project information start and finish date. So we could also see in this example, we wanted the Excel training just itself to start a bit later. There's been a delay. The trainer wasn't, wasn't feeling very well. So now I can, in this example, I can, what's called add a constraint. Now we couldn't do this in manual scheduling. So I'm going to double click the Excel training task. Go to advanced, delay it. So start no earlier than, because we don't know exactly when the trainer is coming back. And then from Monday the 13th to Wednesday, the, so Monday the 13th of August. We don't want that one. You want Wednesday the 15th. Now, we might. I would advise to add a note for any constraints so you know the reason. We'll put trainer unable to deliver due to sickness. Or due to illness. Click OK. Now we've got everything has moved now to the 15th for the start of our three dates together. But now we can see that it shifted everything two days on. So the word training has now gone to the Friday. The visio training has gone to the following Monday. And we can now see the change. The, the effect of the constraint. Now the beauty about the constraint is it's now got a note with it to tell you what the reason was. We might have a similar problem in this example with the Visio training. Say the Visio training couldn't be undertaken for 10 days, 10 working days from Monday the 20th of August. So now I'm going to now perform the same activity. I'm going to double click it, put a constraint on. And we do want the 20th of August. We want another 10 days from there. And we'll go from the 27th. We'll go to the 3rd of September. Put a note in. And we'll say training room unavailable. Okay, and now you can see the link between the word training and visual training has really extended because the visual training now has been severely pushed out. And you can see the duration of the three together is now increasing. So it depends on the changes you're making. You'll see the summary of all three is now increasing by the effect of the constraints. And if you see any blue behind any dates, that means the effect of what you've just done. So the last constraint had the effect of knocking the last two dates out and it affected the duration. So this gives you an idea of the use of auto scheduling and the ability to add features like constraints 
to make a change for you or using the project start or finish date to make a change for you. So with auto scheduling tasks, you wouldn't make any changes yourself. You just let Microsoft Project make the changes for you according to specific settings that you put in like constraints. So this completes the example in this case of auto scheduled tasks. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Hope to see you for the next tutorial and thanks for watching.